You know the big names of the American Revolution. You know the Adams brothers, John and Samuel. You know Thomas Jefferson. You, of course, know General George Washington. But there are other figures that are lesser known. Hercules Mulligan, Crispus Attucks, James Armistead. These all played their role and were figures of their own significance and should enjoy wider notoriety amongst readers and students of the, uh, the revolution. One such figure who should have more notoriety than she currently enjoys is Deborah Sampson, probably the most successful woman to pass herself off as a man and fight in the American Revolution and take a bullet for her country. It's possible that you've seen a drunk comedy sketch on YouTube hosted by Paget Brewster and starring Evan Rachel Wood as Deborah Sampson. It's a comedic, if highly irregular and non-factual, overview of this woman and the role that she played in the founding of our country. To be completely honest, if we were looking at her as just a regular continental soldier, she didn't do anything of a special renown. It's not like she earned a Congressional Medal of Valor or anything. She was just an effective soldier. She knew how to do her drills. She knew how to wear the uniform. She knew how to hide amongst the men and effectively be one of them, but uh, keep herself hidden in all of the ways that really mattered. Right up into the point where she took a bullet at Terrytown. Side note, there is still a place called Terrytown in New York. It was once larger than it is now, but they divided it in the mid-90s and called half of the town Sleepy Hollow so that it could become a tourist destination after a General Motors plant closed down. But I digress. The point is that uh, she did something that few other women tried and she was the most successful at it. And now as she is starting to get a little bit more attention in the 21st century, there's a bit of of a grapple. Different groups want to claim her as icons for their ideology and it ends up muddying the the facts and the history around her. Was she a feminist? No. Was she a lesbian? No. Was she black? No. Was she trans? No. She was just a woman of her time who found herself in a unique situation with a unique opportunity to secure some material resources for herself by doing something extremely bold and unlikely. And she managed to pull it off for 17 months. Author Patricia Clapp wrote a novel called I Am Deborah Sampson. It is a heavily fictionalized version of Deborah Sampson's life. And while it makes for a very entertaining read, and it is a a story that is very well told, it bears about as much resemblance to the facts as a Disney cartoon does to the literary work upon which it is based. Or let's say a Ridley Scott movie to the actual historical facts that inspired him. Maximus Decimus Meridius was not an actual historical figure, even if Commodus was, for example. Uh, Kingdom of Heaven and its portrayal of the Crusades, good movie, historically inaccurate. Napoleon, haven't seen it, got no interest in seeing it, but you get the gist. Author Alfred Young put together a book that came out about a year ago, and I just heard about it recently. I threw it onto my Audible list because uh, the reviews of it were uh, very convincing. And I just finished listening to it today, and it was incredible. He did the hard work and heavy lifting of sorting through original sources to cut through the modern-day BS, the opinions and the editorialization, and most importantly, the histrionics surrounding this woman and uh, does a great job of cutting the ties that modernists have attached to her to pull this brave figure into various ideologies. When my wife and I were looking up books on Deborah Sampson a couple of years ago, there was one in particular that she read, and she got about halfway through it, and she just couldn't finish it, because it was written by two ardent feminists who kept describing their own 21st century ideologies and sensibilities, to this 18th century woman, 
going so far as to assume that they knew her thoughts and transcribing those onto the paper. Uh, that is the very worst kind of historical writing because it is non-factual historical writing and that makes it bullcrap. I tried to find another book and there was one that came out just a couple of years ago by an author who uh, he or she said that uh, he or she had the, the, the transgenderism going on and was trying to write this from the angle of Deborah Sampson being a, a transgender soldier and uh, this author also claimed to be a, a descendant of Deborah Sampson. Who knows? It, you could just tell from the description that it was going to be full of histrionics. When I read this description of Alfred Young's book, I was, I was intrigued to finally be able to cut through all that and sort through those details and find out what do we actually know about this woman, what she did, why she did it, and what her legacy means today. She was the daughter of an impoverished family. She was uh, given into another family to be uh, effectively a servant. She learned different skills and trades and such, uh, but she really wasn't in a position to earn any inheritance. Uh, you know, her, her dad was poor, her mom was uh, you know, completely destitute. There was no land or farm or anything that she was going to inherit. But physically, she found it possible for her to pass as a man. At the time of the revolution, the average height of the American male was five foot five, and the American female was five foot. Deborah Sampson was over five foot seven. Uh, this would be like a modern woman today who was six foot four, right? It, it would definitely stand out. It would get your attention. And if she had the general physical build of a man, not to necessarily say that she had to be gigantic and muscular, but that she didn't have the pronounced curves of a woman, if she was built just a little bit more straight up and down, and she had small breasts and could strap them down with a bandage to her chest, bind them, and then uh, you know, let the uniform do the rest, all she'd have to do is deal with a little bit of hazing over the fact that she's an army soldier but she can't grow a beard. Deborah Sampson had to deal with that. And also hide her monthly visitor, and if she could pull all of that off, well, she could be one of the boys. Uh, there are letters, there are documents, there are receipts, there are journal entries, there's all kinds of stuff that Young sorts through to get to the core of the matter. Uh, after she got injured and got uh, discharged from the army when she was found out, it took her a long time to get her pension that she was owed as a soldier. And Young goes into great detail about different types of soldiers that struggled to prove that they were owed their pensions. Like this is back when money was tangible and Congress actually kept an eye on that kind of thing. And there were a couple of women who tried to pass themselves off as former soldiers, but you know, had no proof and were lying, but were effectively trying to run scams to defraud the government. And so while there was a little bit of 18th and 19th century I don't know, sexism is the wrong word, but just your presentism of the time that made Congress resistant to the idea of paying this pension to the soldier. There were also valid reasons outside of her sex that would have driven them to be suspicious of that. Again, Young goes into great detail about it. Aside from all of the facts that he's able to assemble and the narrative that he's able to write, uh, without violating those facts, the writing itself is just great and eminently readable. And every time I pressed play, uh, I just found myself falling into this story and the way that uh, the way that he was able to put it all together and present it. This is the kind of book that I love reading when it comes to historical nonfiction because it gives you the facts and it's able to cut through the BS. The epilogue was especially valuable as he focused on debunking certain modern narratives about her, some of which I've already touched on here. But I highly recommend you check out this book by Alfred Young. It is called Masquerade. It came out in 2023. Uh, I will eventually get a physical copy for my library because this is the kind of thing I'm going to want to thumb through over and over. Uh, in addition to a specific view of Deborah Sampson, it also really helps you to get a, a grasp on the time period and the sensibilities of the masses so that you can understand 
the world in which she operated and why and how she did what she did. So check out Masquerade by Alfred Young. That'll do it for now. Till next time, drive safe. See you out there.